Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of plant tissues, organs and systems, and in particular on the plant organ system. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to this tutorial on plant organ systems. So in the previous tutorial we had a quick look at um, various plant tissues and broke down the ultrastructure of the plant into its individual components. So it'll be really helpful for you to go back and watch that if you haven't already. So in today's tutorial we're going to have a look at the rate of transpiration and how it may be affected by various different factors and we're also going to have a look at the structure and function of the various components involved in transpiration. Um, so in the previous tutorial we've already looked at xylem and why it's important and why it's needed in, in the plant. Um, so do go back and watch that previous tutorial if the word xylem or its function is not so familiar to you. So transpiration is the movement of water away from the plant's leaves from the inside of the plant. So it occurs as water diffuses through the plant from the roots and evaporates from the leaves. So when the water is um, uptaken through the roots and then it's going to move through the plant, diffuse through the plant in the xylem and it's going to reach the leaves from which it evaporates. And the evaporation of water from the leaves will then cause a shortage of water in the plant, which means there's going to be a backlog of water, the plant requires more water, which allows more water to be taken up from the roots. So it's kind of like a, um, kind of like a circle of life, I guess. So we have water diffusing through the plant, through the xylem, from the roots, and then it evaporates from the leaves. And as water evaporates out of the plant, we're going to have more water being taken up from where it was originally coming from, so the roots. And we refer to this as the transpiration stream in the plant. So just to represent what I've just said diagrammatically, just to make it a little bit easier for you. So we have water, which is absorbed by the root hairs, right? So water in the soil, absorbed by the root hairs, so through here. Then it's going to move through the transpiration stream. Um, so it's going to move through the xylem. And from there, it's going to reach the leaves. And once it reaches the leaves, it can then evaporate from the leaf surface. So how may transpiration, the rate of transpiration, be affected? So as temperature increases, so does the rate of transpiration, as the water particles gain more energy to diffuse into the plant and evaporate out of the stomata. So we'll have a look at the stomata a little bit later, so don't worry if that word is a little bit foreign. But it's basically the route by which um, water escapes from the leaves out into the environment via evaporation. So remember, when we get the temperature increase, that means that our water particles are going to have more heat energy, more kinetic energy, and therefore the rate of transpiration will increase because your water particles will move more quickly, they'll evaporate more quickly. So this will increase the rate of transpiration if we get an increase in temperature. So transpiration is um, will be occurring at a relatively faster rate in warmer countries or in the summer months as opposed to cooler countries or in the winter months. So humidity also affects the rate of transpiration, because if you think about it, humidity refers to the kind of concentration gradient of water in the air, I guess. So, you know, when you go to a country around the equator, the people refer to it as being more humid because there's a higher concentration of water in the air around us. So you see, this would be more humid here, where there's more water droplets in the area surrounding the plant. So... When the air is more humid, there's going to be more water molecules in this region just outside the leaf. And this means that the concentration gradient is reduced, because remember, diffusion occurs from a high, sorry, yes, from a high 
to a low concentration gradient. But in a high, in a high humidity environment, we're going to have more water outside the area of the leaf surface and less water within. So that's going to reduce the concentration gradient because instead of moving from high water concentration within the leaf to low water concentration outside the leaf, the area outside the leaf is going to have a higher water concentration. and Therefore, it's going to be more of a low to high concentration gradient, which isn't favourable for evaporation of water from the leaf surface. So the more humid the air, i.e. the more water droplets in the air surrounding the leaf surface, the lower the rate of transpiration because the concentration gradient is reduced. So if you think about it really logically like that, you can work it out from first principles instead of having to memorise all of these random sentences. And air movement also affects the rate of transpiration. So as the movement of air increases, the concentration gradient is increased, so the rate of transpiration increases. So the way I like to think about this is, let's say we have water droplets just outside the surface of this leaf. We have a strong gust of wind, okay? That's going to displace these water molecules to over here, okay? Essentially leaving this area outside the leaf with fewer water molecules around it because this gust of wind has moved these water molecules over here, right? So therefore, we're going to have a lower water concentration gradient just outside the leaf. Therefore, we're going to have, sorry, we're going to have a lower concentration of water outside the leaf and therefore the concentration gradient itself is higher because of the high water concentration within the leaf, but the lower water concentration just outside the leaf. So that means that your actual difference between the two is larger and we refer to that as the concentration gradient. So that increases our rate of transpiration. So here we can see there's more wind movement so therefore our water molecules are going to be constantly displaced from the surface of the leaf and therefore there's going to be a steeper concentration gradient for water movement out of the leaf. Okay so similar concepts across all of these factors that affect transpiration. And then we have light intensity. So as the light intensity decreases, the stomata close up and there is a reduction in photosynthesis. So this means that very little water can escape and so the rate of transpiration decreases. So that was a summary of the factors that affect transpiration. And they all affect transpiration by affecting the rate of transpiration, which is a really important measure. So the rate of anything describes the amount of transpiration or the amount of x, so x here is transpiration, per unit time. So you would always do the raw amount of transpiration that occurs over the unit time. So it's just a simple equation here for the rate of transpiration. So now let's have a look at um, the roots, stem and leaves that form the plant organ system for transpiration. And let's also have a look at this word stomata that we referred to earlier. So water moves through the xylem as part of the transpiration stream. And in the previous tutorial, we had a look at two structures that allow for movement of substances. So the xylem, which allows for the movement of water and mineral ions, and the phloem, which allows for movement of nutrients, so amino acids, glucose. And so water moves through the xylem as part of the transpiration stream, as we saw a little earlier on in previous slides. And then how do we get water evaporation from the leaf into the air? Well, we have stomata, which are small gaps in the leaves that allow water to move through. And these are surrounded by guard cells, which open the stomata when they take in water. So we'll have a look at a diagram a few slides from now, and that, this, that will make it a little bit clearer. But basically what we have are the stomata, which are the small gaps in the leaves so this is your this is your gap in your leaf this is your leaf surface but surrounding the stomata are your guard cells okay so guard cells open the stomata when they take in water which therefore allows gas exchange for photosynthesis 
So just to make this all a little bit clearer for you, so remember we have our transpiration stream that is occurring through the xylem and that's our water moving up through, taken up by the roots, up towards the leaf surfaces via the xylem. So that's our transpiration stream. And then we had a look at the guard cells and the stomata or stoma. And um, stomata is um, the singular stoma, the plural. So um, that's your stoma, so that's your gap in your leaf surface and it's surrounded by guard cells, okay? And we came across the mesophyll and the cuticle in the previous tutorial. So do go back if that's not familiar. But from this tutorial, all you need to know is that this is how water leaves the leaf through the stoma. And that's controlled by the turgidity of the guard cell. Okay, so I hope that was all clear for you there. Um, and just to add another little fact that might be useful is that when there is less water, the guard cells become flaccid and they close the stomata. So can you imagine that if there's less water in the plant, we need to retain water. So the guard cells are going to lose their rigidity. They're going to become flaccid. They're going to move together, therefore closing up the stomata and then preserving water within the plant, so not allowing for its evaporation. So this is one way in which the guard cell can affect how water is lost via the transpiration stream. So well done for today. Do go back and watch the previous tutorial if some of these words like mesophyll and cuticle and xylem and phloem were a little bit foreign to you because then this will all make a little bit more sense. But that's all for now on plant organ systems. Um, so well done for today and I'll see you for the next tutorial. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.